Next, let's explore the idea of correcting for a color cast. In other words, trying to rebalance a scene to make it appear more natural. This particular shot has a bit of a greenish cast to it. And we can tell a color cast to some degree because of how the traces may look in the vector scope. Remember, sometimes things are more clear in the vector scope, sometimes they're more clear in the parade scope, sometimes it's a combination of the two. But in this particular case, we can tell that the image has a greenish cast because all the traces in the vector scope seem to be leaning toward green to some degree. The next image in the timeline has got what you might call a warmish color cast. And warm is kind of another way of saying that it's got kind of a yellow red or an orangish cast to it. The color cast in this particular case is stretching up in that direction. Now to start to explore how to correct for a color cast, let's just take a look at this grayscale image. In a nutshell, you correct for a color cast by color balancing in the opposite direction in the color wheels as the color cast itself. So this particular image has a reddish color cast, so I would want to balance in an opposite direction from red, in other words, somewhere near cyan. So I'm going to start by using the lift controls and drag in a direction that rebalances that image. And again, one of the things that we discussed is that when something is going to be neutral, again, our eyes could potentially fool us a little bit, but when things are neutral, and it's great having an image like this because it's really clear to see in the vector scope as well as the parade scope, then things will tend to fall toward the center of the vector scope. So we just moved the shadow traces, which is why that was the only thing that was basically rebalancing. So our shadow balance is basically somewhere near the middle of the scope, and it's pretty even in the parade scope down near the bottom as well. Same thing with highlights. Balance in the opposite direction as the color cast. So balancing again in a cyanish kind of direction, possibly going too far, and then going too far in the other direction. By going back and forth, you keep your eyes refreshed, and so they don't really settle on one thing, and you get to really see what it looks like um, a little too far in one direction, a little too far in the other direction, and it really helps you find that middle place sometimes a lot better. Now, just by adjusting shadows and highlights, it seemed to have overlapped so much into the midtones, there doesn't appear to be a need to make a midtones adjustment. But again, not a bad idea to shake that up and also go in that same direction toward or against the color cast. In this case, pretty much anything I'm doing is just making things worse. But it's a great example to show you how you might experiment with that. In the next tutorial, we'll look at how to balance out the color cast of a real world image.